Ah, nature. What could be better than the quiet tranquility, the crisp, clean air, a world of peaceful, restful serenity? You're a shooter. What's better is making some noise, smelling the gun smoke in your nostrils, and experiencing the sense of friendly but fierce competition with others and with yourself. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but I'm getting ahead of myself here. You'll discover all that for yourself later. But first, how do you find out if you are a shooter? There's only one way. You've got to pull the trigger. And that's what this video is all about, encouraging you and preparing you for the shooting experience. Despite what you may have read and certainly have heard, the shooting sports and their people are wonderful and addictive. So be prepared. Once you try it, you're going to love it for a lifetime. Hi, I'm Leslie Easterbrook. Now, you may recognize me as Callahan in all those Police Academy movies, or as Ditsy Rhonda on the Laverne and Shirley television show. In all those years in the television and motion picture industry, I handled a lot of guns. But up until a few years ago, I had never even fired a real one. And look at me now. <laughs> I even have the outfit. Well, until a few years ago, I believed all the things that I'd read and been told about all gun people being crazy, the lunatic fringe, things that were said and written by people who don't shoot. Well, that's what we're gonna change right now. Once you've viewed this video, you will no longer be a part of the ignorant majority. Hopefully, you'll be prepared to make an informed decision about shooting and be prepared to try it. But don't say I didn't warn you. Once you try it, you're gonna love it. And that's really why I'm here making this video, because I love every second I'm at the range. It's a wonderful, wonderful sport. We need to get you out here. It's a family sport. Moms, pops, husbands, kids, grandparents. Championship scores have been turned in by nine-year-olds all the way up to 95-year-olds. I know of a man who spent his 95th birthday on the trap range. Pretty amazing, huh? Wheelchair shooters, some of the best shooters in the country, some of the top scores. Everybody can shoot this sport. Now, the one thing that I would say all of the guys on the range say is we got to get more women to shoot. Now, a lot of those guys are single, so there's something for everybody. Please, come out and join us. What's she doing? We're supposed to be shooting. And, you know, I, I think I'm late for my squad. They're going to be yelling for me soon. I swear it. Leslie! Now, just a minute! This video is a tool. Remember, it's a teaching tool. There's a lot of material in this. So you can always see something you want to see again, roll it back, watch it again. Get infused and come join us. I can't believe it. A fly landed right on the end of my barrel just when I was pulling the trigger. I sprained my trigger finger. Oh. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Maybe it's the gun. Nah. nah. But I got to get a new pair of shooting glasses. <laughs> no kidding, look at you. <laughs> oh, hi. You just caught us participating in one of the grand traditions of shooting, making excuses for missing a target. You see, it's never the shooter's fault. It's actually become a proud part of the shooting sports. Well, maybe not a proud part, but certainly a part. In fact, there's only one aspect of shooting where making excuses hasn't been perfected into a fine art. That's because no excuses are allowed. Hi, I'd like to introduce you to Steve Smith. Steve and his father, Alan, own Blackjack Sporting Clays. Now, Steve, as a range owner, for a beginner, when they come out to shoot, what can you tell them so they can protect themselves and protect others as well? Leslie, uh, ear and eye protection, 
Always. Action's always open. That's a breach here? Yes, ma'am. Side by side or over and under like this and an automatic the slide breach always open. When you step up into the cage, put your shells in, close your gun, shoot the birds, shells out in the trash can, and action's always open or out. Like, like this? this? Or like this on an auto loader? Yeah, open a router. Get the heck out. Right. Right. We're tough. When you become a shooter, you become a part of a sport with an unequaled safety record. Are the shooting sports safe? Yes, they are safe. In fact, there's been no fatal injuries in the shooting sport since it began in the late 1700s. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So that makes it safer than football, basketball, and maybe hockey? Yes, it's amazing. No one puts the two together, guns and safety. It just doesn't click with most people. Well, I know when I'm on the range, I feel like I'm probably in the safest place in the world. You are responsible not only for those around you, but also for your personal safety as well. Eye protection i.e. glasses, always wear them, ear protection, ear plugs. Now ear plugs come in various shapes and sizes, but make sure you pick up some before you take that first shot and make sure you're wearing them as well. Uh, shoulder protection. To absorb some of the recoil from the gun going off, you may want to get a shirt with a pad, vest with a pad, or one of these that Velcros right onto your, excuse me, Strap, girls. And girls, a word to the wise, never ever wear a bra that has a plastic or a metal a hook on it. Here, wear a sports bra or at least a bra where the strap is sewn onto the cup. You will thank me for that later. So we've got eye protection, ear protection, shoulder protection, fun protection. Those are the rules in all the shotgun sports and every shooting sport. Did I say shotgun sports? You bet I did. Did you think something this much fun would have only one game to play? <laughs> Deciding to shoot a shotgun is just the beginning. Now you have to decide which shotgun sport you're going to shoot first. I started with traps, so um, I've got to go change my outfit. Well, you can come as you are. All right. Listen up, I'm only gonna say this once, cause talking about shooting ain't near as much fun as doing it. This is a trap field. Out there is your enemy. It's a nasty, wicked little trap machine whose sole purpose in life is to throw these four inch clay targets at a variety of heights, angles, and speeds out of that little flat roofed hut out there we call a house in order to trick you into missing them. This is the puller. The puller is not your enemy. It's his job to release the target when you tell him to. So he darn sure better hear you call for that target. Eventually, every trap shooter develops his own style of calling for the target. You see how easy it is? The rules are to keep your call short, clear, and distinct. The puller also keeps score, so it's wise to be nice to pullers. Now, there are five stations on a trap field, one through five, from left to right, facing your enemy, the trap machine. The person who starts on the lowest numbered station is automatically your squad leader. When you have a person on each station, that's five people, you have what's known as a full squad. Now, the squad leader's job is to get everybody organized. So, he'll say, squad ready? And if he gets an affirmative, he or she will say, puller ready? If he gets an affirmative, he'll ask to see a target. Can we see a target, please? Everybody's eyes front. Now we see a target. If we don't like that target, if it's ugly or it's broken or it's bizarre, we can ask to see another one. When the target finally comes out normally, we can commence shooting. Each shooter taking five shots at five different targets, and then the puller says, Unload and change and calls out the scores. As each shooter advances to the next station with the shooter on number five, walking all the way around to station number one. 
never change stations with a loaded gun. Now, when we get to our new stations, being considerate and armed, we wait for everyone to be ready. When they are, who starts shooting? Good! The person who shot first the time before always shoots first, the squad leader. Now, when all five people have shot five targets from each station, we have ended the round. Confused? Well, I was too, but you better get this down, because these rules are the same for all forms of American trap. That's right, Virginia, there are three American trap games. Where I am now standing is the 16-yard line, because we're 16 yards from our nasty little enemy out there. Now, from the 16-yard line, we shoot two games, singles and doubles. That's right, kids, two birds at the same time. That's five pair of targets from each station before we change. Now, you have probably noticed that the stations don't stop at the 16-yard line. This is called handicap trap. As I walk back, you probably noticed that the stations are numbered. Well, I'm standing where I shoot handicap trap still, but they're numbered all the way back to the 27-yard line, where the big girls and boys shoot from, where the elite meet to compete. Well, I just made that up, but it's basically true. Now, in singles and doubles, we use a class system, double A, A, B, C, and D, to keep the competition fair and equal. It's actually used in all the other shooting sports. The higher your scores, the higher your averages, the higher your class. That means that you're only competing against your peers. But in handicap trap, you earn this yardage as little as a half a yard at a time by winning in competition. So when you're back here on the 27-yard line, that nasty little enemy is a long way away. Pull! And that target is pretty tough to see. So this is truly the toughest test in trap. I just want to give you a few tips and techniques for getting started. <laughs> I want to give them to you. Sure, I'm an expert. I shoot on the 19-yard line. We have an expert, and I feel like getting him in trouble. Easy, easy. Ah, this is Gil Ash. Now, Gil, championship shooter, trophies, buckles, awards, money, all that kind of stuff. He is also one of the foremost wing shooting and clay target shooting instructors in the country, and also, one of the very few level three instructors of sporting clays. And he is married to a level two instructor in sporting clays. Very married, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you got that? And her name is Vicki. And I let you get a word in. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Miracles no! still happen. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, he may be an expert, but he may not be my friend. Uh, no, no, I'm kidding. You know, it, this might be a good time to talk about the aspect of shooting for the single crowd, oh, yeah. not the game of singles, but the mm -hmm. single crowd. People go play golf, they do tennis, they go bowling to meet somebody. Shooting is even be a better place to go hunting. <laughs> Did I actually say that? If you're married to somebody, mm -hmm. or if you're engaged to somebody, dating them, going steady, and they shoot, it's really silly not to shoot because you're missing valuable time together. I try to encourage my girlfriends to come shooting just for that reason. Am I sick? Now, <laughs> you may get to talk. I'm not sure. <laughs> Gil, you shoot sporting clays. You teach sporting clays. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been doing that too long to forget your trap? No, ma'am. Uh, Sergeant. Uh, uh, ma'am! No, ma'am. No, ma I certainly have. Certainly <laughs> okay. have. Certainly have. But listen, it's getting a little dark out here. Can you shoot trap at night? Uh, you can shoot trap any time you want to shoot trap. Well, let's go find some lights. Let's go turn them on. The first thing we want to talk about are your eyes. We need to determine which one of your eyes focuses first. That's your master eye. It's very simple to determine which eye that is. Simply Place your hands together like this and leave a small hole. Focus on something across the room or out in the front yard. With both eyes open, extend your hands to arm's length, raise the hole up over it, and then pull the hole back to your face. Whichever eye the hole goes to is your master eye. Now, if you're right-handed like me, obviously you would probably like to shoot from your right shoulder. And if you're right-eye dominant and a right-handed person, 
you can shoot with two eyes open. However, if you're right-handed and left eye dominant, or left-handed and right eye dominant, you have two decisions, to, one of two decisions to make. Either learn to shoot from the opposite shoulder. For me, it would be shooting with the left hand if my left eye was dominant, or simply close the eye and that way your shooting eye, the one you're using to guide the gun to the bird, will be over the barrel and you won't have any problems. It's not near as big a problem as most people make of it. Now that we understand eyes, let's talk a little bit about foot position. Your feet should be comfortably positioned under your body somewhere between your shoulders, not too far outside because that'll make you lose your balance this way and cause the gun to go offline. A line from your rear heel across your front toe should line up with, empty gun, the center of your brake window. That way you can swing the gun this way and this way and remain in balance. It's the same for a left-hander. Heel, toe, empty gun again. Notice how the gun comfortably comes straight ahead in the center of the brake window and the gun can swing easily that way and easily this way. Balance is the key in trap shooting, sporting clay shooting, and skeet shooting. This foot position should be a beginning point for your foot position. Now that we understand foot position, let's talk a little bit about getting the gun into our shoulder. Notice when I stand with my weight on the back foot, the slope of my shoulder is this way. Look what happens when I try to mount the gun with my weight on my back foot. The gun comes with the heel of the stock under my collarbone here, or shoulder blade, or whatever you call that bone right there, and what's gonna happen when I pull the trigger is the gun's gonna knock the snot out of me. It doesn't have to hurt. Let me show you a trick. Watch what happens to the slope of my shoulder when I simply put my weight on my front foot and bend forward at the waist. The shoulder then becomes perpendicular to the ground, empty gun, and the gun goes smoothly into the body. Watch one more time. Standing up, the slope of the shoulder is this way. All we have to do is get our nose over our toes. It rhymes because it's supposed to be easier for you to remember nose over toes, and that way the shoulder is set to accept the gun, and our cheek can be positioned on the cone so that we look down the gun barrel. Now let's talk about positioning the eye. We want the eye, empty gun, I'm going to point it at you, to be positioned right over the top of the rib. Notice that my eyes are not turned over this way. They're just parallel to the ground and the gun comes up to my shoulder right there. Now if my eye goes too low, I'm going to want to pick my head up. If it's up too high, I'm going to miss too high. Watch again. The eye should be comfortably set right over the top of the rib. The gun should be comfortably in your cheek right where your teeth meet between the cheekbone and the jawbone. Watch one more time and I'll change the angle a little bit so that you can see the gun come comfortably into my cheek. Weight forward, gun in the front hand, the gun comes comfortably to my cheek. Now that we understand foot position, eyes, how to get the gun in our body, let's talk a little bit about hold position on the trap field, and then we can get started shooting. Hold position means where you point the gun when you call pull. If you're on station one. Here, here I'm here, here I am. And you're a two-eyed shooter, the gun starts above the corner of the trap house, somewhere in this zone. If you're a one-eyed shooter, the gun starts just below the lip of the trap house. On station two. Here, I'm here. Again, if you're a one-eyed shooter, again, the gun starts just below the lip of the trap house. If you're a two-eyed shooter, somewhere up here in this zone, somewhere between 12 to 18 inches, okay? 
if you're on station three. Right here, I'm here. And you're a two-eyed shooter, you never want to start the gun in the middle of the trap house. If you do, the target can come out under the barrel and you don't ever see it until it's already way out there. So what you want to do if you're a right-handed shooter is start the gun just slightly off center. If you're a left-handed shooter, just slightly off center this way. Again, above the lip of the trap house. But if you're a one-eyed shooter, again, just below the lip of the trap house, dead center. Now, if you're on station four. Right here, I'm here on four. Again, we'll go with the one-eyed shooter. You always want to have the gun starting just below the front lip of the trap house. If you're a two-eyed shooter, same corresponding spot, just up here in this, in this zone right here. If you are on station five. Yep, I'm already here. I'm telling you, somebody wants to shoot. If you're a one-eyed shooter, again, the gun's pointed just below the lip of the trap house at the corner. If you're a two-eyed shooter, somewhere up here. Now, one other thing to remember, please remember this. Always keep your eyes focused out in the break zone of the target. Never on the lip of the trap house. The eyes focus back quicker than they focus out. Fabulous, Jill. Absolutely terrific. Wonderful. Terrific. Super, super, super. But you didn't do anything for three-eyed shooters. You must have a reason. <laughs> you know, I, I don't three know. Three-eyed like... shooters. Well, there might be some. <laughs> there out might there. be. I'll come up now with look. something like that on the next day. <laughs> I'll bet you will. Listen, now I don't hold my gun like that. I don't stand like that. So I don't know what you've got talking to every shooter. I'm kidding. But you don't look like I do either. <laughs> That's true. And I am kidding. <laughs> Very nice. Not bad, I do huh? have my ponytail get stuck. <laughs> However, when you're on the uh, shooting trap, you will realize that no two, two trap shooters ever agree on any two things about shooting. Mm. But mm. until you get your own style, listen to what this man has told you. He is the best. This might be a good time, too, to talk a little bit about trap etiquette. Yes. Very important. The trap shooters are the most somber shooters on the range. Mm -hmm. They don't <laughs> like to be interrupted. So the adage, better seen than heard, heard. fits this very well. Unless, no of course, you're calling for the target. Well, we showed you hold points at night because we felt it would be easier for you to see them that way. We've come to shoot during the day because we felt like it would be easier for you to see the barrel move toward the target. Before we talk about shooting trap, perhaps it's best if we cover some shotgunning basics. And what better place to start than what comes out of the end of the shotgun? Unlike a rifle or a pistol that shoots a bullet, a shotgun shoots a cloud of pellets made of lead. The best way for you to understand what the shot cloud looks like is for me to shoot a pattern sheet, which I've done. You know, most people think a shotgun pattern is about the size of a cantaloupe or a small watermelon. Actually, it's the size of an umbrella. Look, this is where it started. Look how it ended up. Now, let's compare the shot cloud to the target. Makes the target look small, doesn't it? And you know, all you have to do is hit this target with three of any of these pellets, and it'll break. Now, if I were teaching you how to shoot trap for the first time, never having shot trap before. I would go through all the fundamentals that I've gone through you with to date, or to this point in time. And then I would tell you to go to the trap field with me, and we would lock the bird, lock the machine down so that we would throw the bird directly away, like this. A simple straightaway target. See how it goes straight away. It's easier to learn the move on a consistent target so that when you shoot trap and the targets are not consistent, they come out in different spots and places from the trap house, it'll be easier for you to adapt to that. Now, assuming that we have our foot position correct, okay? Oh, Les, would you come over here for a minute, please? Oh, I'd be glad to. Would you pull this target for me? Absolutely. Earplugs, eyes. Oh, I'm okay. ready. All right. Now, I'm going to show you how to get lead on this target. You know, we better talk about lead first. You know, I was going to say something because I didn't even know what that meant when I started it's shooting. It's a girl thing. What's lead on a target? Lead means that the gun has to get out in front of the target when it's shot so that when the target and the shot come together, they meet each other. 
if the gun's here and the target's moving that way, if you don't get the gun ahead of the target, it's not going to hit the target. You've got to get the shot out ahead so that the target and the shot come together. It's very simple. And, and, and you've got to get the, that means you've got to get the barrel moving in, in the direction the target is Precisely. flying. Precisely. In trap, the way we get lead is swing through. Notice, when I see the gun get to the front of the target, by the time I say bang, the gun's already out in front of the target where it has to be to hit the target. Ready? Bang! See that? One more time. Bang! It's already there. Now, we're going to shoot the straightaway target here in a minute, and this is what your lead picture will look like. The gun will start here, and the target's here. We'll go bang, just like that. Notice how it goes right to the top edge of the target and through it. Ready? Bang! And as soon as the gun gets to the target, pull the trigger and keep swinging. And girls, guys understand this. Once you pull the trigger, don't stop moving in that direction. Oh, by all means. Never Keep. stop your gun directly after you've pulled the trigger. Precisely. Or when you pull the trigger. Keep swinging. Got to keep eyes, that pattern moving. Yes. Eyes on the target, head on the stock. This is right. what it should look like. Yeah, stop. That's right. <laughs> okay. Now, if you'll pull for me, please, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Get our foot position correct. Straight away target. Mind your hold position. Eyes and ears? Yeah. Yeah, I see them. <laughs> That's why I hear you yelling. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to shoot this target with my head off the stock so that you can see and watch, see what the gun does. But new shooters never shoot a gun with your head off oh, the stock. No. He's oh, an no. expert. All right, ready? Hold position. Pull. Oh. Just like that. Surprised, huh? Hit shot, huh? <laughs> Watch how the gun slowly moves to the target. You are wow. smooth. Thank you, Donna. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Smooth! How many smooth. O's in smooth? How many what? O's in smooth. 37. You got you it. Got me. <laughs> smooth. I want you to be so smooth with this gun when you move it to the target. There are 37 O's <laughs> in smooth. All right. Watch and move again. that whole body, too. Tell them to move their whole body, that's not just exactly their little right. arms and that's, hands. That's correct. The gun moves in the body with the head on the stock. See, that whole thing's going. Which thing? I pointed at this. Oh, I didn't know I could touch be, you. Be nice. Okay. Be nice. Be nice. All right. Well, Here we go now. now. Watch. Here we go. Last time in slow motion. Watch the gun go to the target. Ready? Pull. Awesome. Pretty good. Awesome. And so will you be awesome. Listen to this guy. Okay, now we're going to go over to station two and shoot the same presentation. The key here is to get comfortable with the move to the target. Eyes on the target, head on the stock. Will you pull for me over here? Oh, yeah, but I'll come stay. Oh, you want me to go yeah, with come you? Come on over. All right. We're going to shoot the same straightaway target. I just want to, you to get a feel for the move where the gun goes just slightly up left instead of straight away. Yeah, Watch over my shoot. you've changed your angle, right. your angle right. to that straightaway Thanks. target. You're exactly right, Okay. Liz. All right, here we go now. Ready? You want to watch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go now. Foot position in the brake zone. Weight forward. Gun on our shoulder. Find the hold position. Focus your eyes out. And pull. Remember, watch how slow the gun moves. How many O's in slow? 37. 37. All right. Here we go. Smooth and slow. Focus on only the target. The gun will go there. Ready? Pull. Okay. You don't know how hard this is to do with a gun <laughs> not up on your face in this sport. All right, two in a row. Now, we're going to do one in slow motion now so you can see it. Last time. Ready? Here we go. Slow motion. Coming up. Watch the gun go to the target. Ready? Pull. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I now. can't believe you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took a little practice, darling. Okay, now, 
We've gotten to the point now to where you're comfortable moving the gun to the target. At this point in time, I'd go into the same thing at station four. Shoot a few targets till you get comfortable with it. And now Leslie and I are going to meet you back on three, and we're going to show you what oscillation means. Oh, the Come wobble on, wobble. The, the wobble. targets all go in different directions, and you don't know what angle you're going to get when you call full. It's exactly right. Now, I want to show you the difference between a straightaway target, which you've seen, and a target that wobbles. Uh-oh. Not wobbles. Oscillate. And that means... Oh, that means that the target comes from the same place, but it goes to a different place each time. You see how they're not all going straight now. Some to the right, some to the left, and that's what makes trap fun. Why don't you shoot a few, <laughs> and I'll close this out where we can go do something else. I've been waiting. Would you like to pull four, please, ma'am? So, in our segment on traps, so far we've discussed foot position, how to get the gun into your body, oh. how to keep your head on the stock. Did you get that one? Of course I got oh, that okay. one. Just, You're just my checking. teacher. <laughs> just checking. All right, get your head on the stock. We've discussed your hole points oh. for when you call pull. We've discussed how to move the gun slowly to the target. And we've discussed that you always keep your eye on the target, the head on the stock. And when you see oh. the target come out, boom. Just shoot right at the front edge of it. Let the gun keep swinging. Here we are on the doubles field. And doubles means doubles, two at one time. The targets come out of the house. They don't oscillate anymore. And they come out, well, what am I trying to do that for? Why don't you just look at them? There we go. Now we're on station two, which means on station two, you'd have a straightaway and then swing to the left to get the second target. Doubles is a timing game. You must kill the first target quickly like this. Boom. Even quicker than that. Watch. Whole point set such, as, such that you can trap the first target. Ready? Pull. Boom. Boom. Because the quicker you shoot the first target, the more time you have to get to the second target. Because as the target goes up, what's it going to do? Start falling. If you can catch the second target before it starts falling, it's easier to hit. Let's look at one more pair and listen to the rhythm. Ready? Pull. Boom. Boom. Hear the rhythm? Now, we're going to show you some people shooting doubles. Listen to the rhythm of the shot. Notice how quickly they kill the first bird. Notice the timing between the first bird and the second. Notice all the first shots are taken at about the same spot, giving the shooters time to get the gun to the second target before it starts falling. Timing is everything in doubles, remember. Now, for a tip on how to get your eyes to the second target. Gun bearer, please. Maestro. Hurt me. <laughs> Stand I by, I darling. I'm in camel. <laughs> All right, now, back to the serious part of this, OK? Eyes first, then the gun. Come on in close where you can see my eyes. Now, watch my right eye, OK? You're going to be the second target. Empty gun. I'm going to point it at you. See? Close it empty, OK? Here we go. First target. Now, if I watch the gun go to the second target, look where the gun goes. Boom! You see how it goes by? That's because you were looking at the gun and couldn't see the target. The gun had to cross the target before your eyes picked it up and then it had to go back to it. Look what happens when I kill the first target and I flick my eye to the second target before I move the gun. Watch where the gun goes. Ready? Boom! Flick! Boom! Right there, wasn't it? Let's try it one more time. Looks too easy to be true, doesn't it? Watch. Doesn't matter where you come from. Let's see it's up here. 
boom, flick, boom. The eyes always guide the gun. The eyes never look at the gun. The gun will always follow the eyes. So remember, eyes on the target, head on the stop. <laughs> That's fabulous. You can relax a little now. I, I just want to tell you that I've been shooting for a few years, and I've actually won a few tournaments. But since I've been working with Gil, my shooting has improved immeasurably. So thank you. You're welcome, darling. Now listen, I, I hear that skeet it's, is skeet. fun. It's a dirty, nasty job, but somebody's got to do it. Does that mean he wants more? 10-4. <laughs> Gil, I've heard that skeet is fun. You agree? Mm-hmm. Now listen, I'd like for you to come and give me some pointers on skeet so I can improve my and skeet like I've improved my trap. I'll give you pointers on anything you want me to as long as I get to follow you over there. This guy makes sense to me. Follow Hurt me. me. Follow me. Darling, follow me. Follow I'd me. Follow, follow me. Step. To the end hut, of the earth. Hut. I think it's interesting that all of the shooting games had their origins outside of the United States, except for Skeet. Now, in 1915, Charles Davis, a retired Boston businessman and bird hunting fanatic, was trying to solve two problems. Number one, how to shoot in the off season. Number two, how to shoot in a situation that best simulated the actual shots required in the field. Well, with the help of his son, Henry, and his best friend, Bill Foster, he created a completely circular shooting course. Looked like a clock. The trap machine was at 12 o'clock, threw birds at 6 o'clock. Coincidentally, it was called shooting round the clock. Well, after a few years of doing this, they realized that circle was just too big, took up uh, too much space. So they cut the circle in half and doubled the number of trap machines. Voila! Skeet, Scandinavian for the word shoot, was born. And with very few alterations, it's the very same game that we still play today. Now in trap, remember, the targets are always going away from you. But that isn't like birds in the field. They come at you, they go away from you, they rise, they fall, they go back and they go forth. Well, Mr. Davies had a solution. He decided to take two trap houses and set them an opposite side to the semicircle. From one house, he would set the trap machine high up, and in the other house, the trap machine low down. See? Now the targets always come out the same way, straight out of the house. But you, the shooter, you now move on this outer ring of seven stations, radically changing your angle and distance to the target. Now station number eight is set directly between the two houses. So what do you have? Targets moving away from you, targets coming towards you, targets going side to side at angles of up to 90 degrees from you. Mr. Davies wasn't about to give up the fun of doubles either. We shoot four sets of doubles from opposite sides of the semicircle. From station six and seven, we shoot the low house target first. And on stations one and two, we shoot the high house target first. Even in practice, the trap shooter is sociable only before, after, and between shooting. However, the skeet shooter seems to be sociable all the time, at least the ones that I shoot with. I guess you could call them the party animals of the shotgun sports. But don't let them fool you. Underneath their exterior, there's some ferocious competition going on, even if it's between you and your last score. But just like with all other shooting sports, safety is first with the skeet shooter as well. Hey, didn't somebody say something about being brief? Yeah, well, I heard that shooting's a lot better than talking. Get up here, Leslie, so we can kick your butt. Whoa! All right, already. Hold on to yourselves. Okay, give me my best, Steve. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, look at these cute... You know, I, I forgot. When you shoot trap, the targets are going away from you, so 99% of the time you've got to use a 12-gauge gun. Now, 12-gauge is the largest gauge that's allowed, but when you shoot skeet, it's really fun because you get to use all these little tiny guns that are lighter and they don't really give you as much recoil. So, oh, this is, oh, a beautiful 20-gauge. That's a 28-gauge. Oh, and a lovely, lovely 410, a caliber 410. Oh, well, listen, we're going to tell you all about gauges later. Well, we don't have a side-by-side -side or any different kind of gun, but I'll tell you about gun styles later as well. Leslie? Leslie. Okay, okay. Um, yes, here we go. Oh, um, well, we have another separate video on skeet, which will give you the rules and all that stuff, but for now, all you need to know is skeet is fun. Well, it would be if we ever got the chance to shoot it. I've forgotten how. 
We're all getting older just standing here. Oh, aren't they kidders? Such kidders. Maybe not. Gil, it's time for a mini clinic. Get me out of this. Pull. Yeah. Well, I guess it's my turn. So you want to learn the game of skeet. Skeet's a game of lead. Lead is merely how far the gun is in front of the target when the trigger's pulled. But before we talk about lead, let's talk about setting up for the shot. And what better place to do it than on station one? So here we are at station one. Remember, heel toe line into the break zone. We're gonna take the target on this side of the field. Now I'm gonna close the gun and mount it so you can look over my shoulder and see where everything happens. Break point. Hold point, muzzles level with the bottom of the window, and focal point between the muzzles and the window. Now, let me show you what it looks like when we break one. Loaded gun, eyes and ears everybody, safety first. Break point. Oh yes, I'm going to shoot this with my head off the stop just like I showed it to you so you can see what the lead kind of looks like. Ready? There it is at the whole point, focal point, pull. That's it. Man, this is fun. Now, that was a little quick, wasn't it? We're going to slow it down for you so that you can see it in slow motion. Now notice how the gun moves the same speed as the target. And notice how the gun stays just ahead of the target. For you guys, it's about a one foot lead. For you ladies, it's about that much. Interesting as we have taught ladies and men over the last two or three years in our clinics, Vicki and I have discovered that men see lead in terms of feet at the target but women see lead in terms of inches at the muzzle. But we'll talk about that in the skeet tape. Remember, slow motion now, look down the gun, watch the gun go with the target and stay the same amount in front of it, and I bet you I hit another one. You never miss on video. Ready? Pull. There it is, maintained lead your own perceived distance between the barrel and the target. It's different for everyone. You'll have to find your own. Perfect. See, I told you. Let's look at it one more time and then we'll go to station two. Watch now, remember the gun starts smoothly. It stays slow, the same speed as the target, so that the lead remains constant. Remember, about a foot of lead will do. Ready? Hold point, focal point, pull. Man, you never miss on video. Well, that's the basic setup for station one, low house. Now, let's go to station two, low house, and see what that looks like. And station two will be just like station one. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Break point, foot position, hold point, two-thirds of the way back to the house, level with the bottom of the window, and the focal point between the gun and the house. Again, I'll shoot the target with my head off the stop so you can see down the gun. Break point, hold point, focal point, pull. Not bad, huh? Got lucky. Now we're going to do it one more time in slow motion. Ready? Pull! I love shooting skeet. Notice that we've only shot incoming targets so far. That's because the incoming target is the easiest target for you to see and to swing on. The best way to learn to shoot skeet is to shoot incoming targets from the low house from stations one or two. And the high house from station six and seven. And now let me give you 
my personal way of understanding what the leads look like in skeet. The lead on station one is one foot, and on station two is about two feet, and on station three is about three feet, and on station four is about four feet. Pretty simple so far. And now we go to five, but five is the same as three, three feet, and six is the same as two, about two feet. And seven is the same as one, about one feet, foot. Is it feet or foot? Who cares, it's about 12 inches, okay? That's easy enough. And all we have left is eight. And all you have to do on station eight is when you see that target, shoot right at it as quick as you can. The only way to learn to shoot skeet is to shoot skeet. Don't worry about missing. A miss is just an opportunity to learn. The only way to learn how to shoot is with an instructor. He's mine. So come on, teach. Whatever you teach say, me. darling. Well, back to nature. Mm. Isn't this beautiful? Gorgeous. These blackjack oak trees are spectacular. Beautiful canopy up there. Well, this is where shotgun's most recent sport developed. True. I think it's ironic that the most recent sport actually simulates best the oldest sport, bird hunting. It's true. Sporting clays is the fastest growing shotgun shooting sport, or any shooting sport for that matter, in the world. Well, in England in the 1920s, nobody shot sporting clays. And now, even with their restricted gun laws, it's more popular than golf. And here, 15 years ago, nobody had heard of sporting clays. And now there are more shooters shooting sporting clays than trap and skeet combined. It's true. And I think probably the reason for that is it's just plain fun. <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> right. Well, some people call it um, golf with guns. Wonder why. <laughs> you know why. We move along a prearranged course, but we don't have holes. We have stations mm -hmm. where we shoot a variety of targets in a variety of shooting situations. And variety and diversity is the key. Absolutely. Some courses change their targets, what, on a weekly basis? You bet. Yeah, most courses, but all courses throw the same targets that you've seen in trap and skeet. And then some. Oh, you're not kidding. <laughs> Even things that you haven't seen anywhere else before. It's true. What, Gil, was that a pterodactyl pursued by a T-Rex? No, no, no. That's what we call sporting clays, and it looks like fun to me. Oh, sure. No, it does, it does. <laughs> Listen, since you're our resident cover boy right here on the cover of Sporting Clays magazine with your daughter, Andrea, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. What are the basic differences for a beginning shooter between shooting trap or skeet and shooting sporting clays? Can you oh, tell us that? a couple. Sure, I can do that. The first difference that we'll talk about between trap and skeet and sporting clays are the targets. The range owner has a variety of ways that he can throw different sized targets in different presentations to fool us shooters. He can use the small mini or the midi, which are both smaller than the trap and skeet target, or he could use this little thick target called a rabbit target. He can throw this little puppy on the ground and it bounces up and down, over, under, around, through, and behind things where you can't even hope to try to hit it. And then there's the Batu target, a wafer-thin target that knifes through the air and you can't even see it because it's so thin. And when it begins to slow down, it pops over like that and falls to the ground and you got to get it before it hits. The range owner can throw all of these targets in a variety of different presentations with different speeds, trajectories, and distances. He can throw singles, true pairs, two targets launched at the same time, a following pair, two targets launched one right after the other, or the more standard report pair. That's two singles launched. When the first bird comes out, the shooter takes the shot, and immediately when he pulls the trigger and the shot's heard, the second target is launched. The other difference between sporting clays and trap and skeet is where the gun starts. In trap and skeet, as you've seen, the gun starts in the shoulder and swings with the target. However, in sporting clays, empty gun, the gun starts below the armpit and you can't mount the gun until you see the target. Now, we talked about already in trap and skeet where the gun comes into the shoulder and the head comes down to the gun to make sure 
that your head is aligned with the barrels. In sporting clays, as you know, you can't start with a mounted gun. Remember, the cheek is the anchor point of the mount. Watch. If I was to shoot a very high driven target and mount the gun to my face, look where it comes in my shoulder. Ouch. Yeah, but it's got to get up there because my head's up there. Yeah. You see that? If the bird's up there, the gun's got to get up Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Now, if I shoot a low rabbit target, watch where the gun comes into my shoulder. But I'll mount it to my face. Watch. Boom. You see it comes in a little bit closer to my uh -huh. shoulder, but it has to because if it comes to the face, if the bird's down here, my face is down here, so it's going to come to a little lower spot in my shoulder. Right. If the bird's up high, it's going to come to a little higher spot in my shoulder. Right. So. Wherever the target is, you have to mount the gun to the face and then the shoulder. Sporting Clay's gun mount. I tell my students, if you can focus on the front edge of the target and move with the target and have an impeccable gun mount, you're going to hit 80% of your targets. But you're going to get to see more about the gun mount when we actually shoot. Hey, Les, come on over. It's time to shoot. Aye, aye, Captain. Pull! Hmm, tricky little floating, downcoming, incoming Very cute. targets. Uh -huh. You know, one of the most frequently made mistakes in sporting clays is that people don't line their feet up where they're going to break the target. Remember in trap and skeet, we talk about the heel toe line lining up in the break zone. Mm -hmm. We're going to break these targets right about here. So I'm going to line my feet up just like that. Then from wherever I'm going to break the target, I'm going to move the gun back about halfway and then my eyes will go about halfway back again. That way I see the target before the gun needs to move, then the gun moves to the target and I break it. It should look something like this. Let me see if I can do this. Trapper ready! Break point, hold point, focal point. Pull! Hmm. I tried it. Not bad, huh? I think I'd get a three on that one. Stop moving, even when you mount it. It's exactly right. And the minute I saw the target, I began to move the barrel with the target. Mm -hmm. Understand? Let's try it one more time. Your eyes go back. The barrel's here, but your eyes look even further back. Always. Okay. You always want the eyes between the barrel and where the target comes out. We have a break point, a hold point, and a focal point. Okay. You have to see the target before you get the gun on it. Get the gun on it when to shoot it. All right, now watch. I'm going to shoot this with my head off the stock so that you can see what the gun does. Pull! Muzzles move. Absolutely. Absolutely. See it? Yeah, okay. It Let's do it one more time. Too. Let's do it one more time. I want you to notice that the gun comes up just in front of the target. Okay? It's very it's tricky called, to do, but you see it's not impossible. It's called maintain lead. Here we go. Ready? Watch the muzzles track the target, and then the mount happens. Okay. Pull! You see how they go right to the target. Now, yeah. that's maintained lean. We wouldn't shoot a rabbit like that because a rabbit's so irregular, we'd shoot a rabbit swing through. Okay. So let's go over to the rabbit maintained station. Maintained lead, you're talking about inches, right? Mm, well, inches from the barrel. as far as ladies are concerned, <laughs> men see lead in terms of feet at the target. We know. Okay. We know. All right, let's go shoot a rabbit. Come on. We're going to shoot the rabbit target with a swing through lead. And before we do that, I want to show you how swing through gets lead on a target. Swing through means that the target crosses the gun and the gun crosses through the target. And as soon as you see the gun touch the front edge of the target, pull the trigger. Now, how does the gun get ahead of the target? Well, the bird crosses the gun, and the gun crosses the target. It takes the eye a fraction of a second to tell the brain, to tell the finger, to pull the trigger, the trigger to get pulled, and the shot to get out the end of the gun barrel. Well, now, let's see where the gun ends up in that fraction of a second. The eye sees it here, but by the time the gun goes off, it's already out there. It's a built-in lead system. It's a very easy way to get lead on erratic targets. And it's the best way to shoot a rabbit target. Now, I'll show you. Hey, Les, come on up here and pull me a target. I'm through talking. 
I'll be glad to. I love it. Okay. I get to watch. You get to watch. Now remember, we're looking for the target to go by the barrel, and then the barrel's going to go right at the target. I'm going to mount the gun right on the bird, and I'm going to pull the trigger. Okay. Here we go. Pull. You see how the gun goes right through it? Absolutely. It's fabulous. Hmm. What'd you think about that one? I'll tell you what, I'm going to do it one more time, but we're going to slow it down so you can see it in slow motion. Okay? Here we go. Ready? Pull. Oh, good shot. Yeah, good shot. Fabulous. Well, you know, it seems like a lot to think about, but it's almost like a reflex action. It's totally reflex. And the beauty about this is if you shoot a fast target, your swing's going to have to be fast. Right. So when it goes by the target, you'll have more lead. Right. In fact, this is the way you shoot trap. Trap is a swing through sport. Absolutely. The only difference is when you come to sporting clays, you have to start with that gun down. Whoa! Remember, we've talked about maintain lead. We've talked about swing through. Now we're going to talk about pull away. Pull away is simply the gun mounts on the front of the target, goes with the target, and then when you want to take the target, you just watch the gun just pull away from the target. And as you see the gap widen, that's when you take the shot. Don't worry about the lead worm out here. You know, that little worm that's out there that you, when you try to figure lead, forget about him. When you come up on the front of the target and see the gap beginning to widen, that's when to pull the trigger. Now, I'm going to try to do this. I'm not very comfortable with this lead method. It's not the foundation for my shooting. I'm more comfortable with swing through or maintain lead. And that's why we've shown you all three you're going to find one that's more comfortable for you. But I'm tired of talking, because shooting about shooting is more fun than talking about it. Hang in there and watch this. Pull! Ah, Yay. wonderful. <laughs> okay, now, we're gonna slow it down for you so that you can see it in slow motion. Remember, you're watching for the gun to come up Maintain the speed of the target, and then as the gun begins to pull away, that's when I'll pull the trigger. Ready? Pull! See, now he's on the target, begins to pull away, and... Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Right Woo! off the nose! Right on the front <laughs> tip! Well, that's about all I've got to say about sporting clay's technique. Hopefully we've given you a good foundation for shooting sporting clays or beginning sporting clays. The one tip that I can give you is try to keep your sporting clays targets simple at first so that you can determine which way you like to get in front of the target. That was fabulous, thank you. Thank you, darling. Now, you may be able to decide what sport you want to try first. You may even have some idea of how to shoot it, thanks to Gil. But uh, what are you going to shoot it with? Well, we'll talk about that right after I have broken one of these, whatever they're what called. What you call it, it's okay. My breech is open, All safety right. first. Thank you, ma'am. around. Okay. And now we're going to show you the different shotgun actions and how they work so that you can load and unload them safely. Trap single, 12 gauge, thank you, ma'am. Boom, and, okay, very good, okay. The over and under, thank you ma'am, thank you ma'am, your plugs in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good girl, ready, boom, boom, and lever across, empties out. There you go. Great. And next we have the pump. Up and safe. Great. Ammo, please. One in. Watch the slide. Chambered the round. Shell 
in the magazine. We won't shoot this one so that you can see the action work. Safe, up, and empty. And? I feel like Vanna White. <laughs> yeah, but I can't keep these guns. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> automatic, or actually semi-automatic. Dropping the shell in, punch the lever. Okay. And there you have it. You want to tell them a little bit about side-by-sides? We don't have one. The side-by-side -side works just exactly like the over and under, except the barrels, instead of being like this, are like this. I never could figure out how to turn that gun that way and make it look right to me. You don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, you don't? No, you don't. Now listen, if somebody hands you a gun, you're a beginner, and you don't know how to open it, this is no time for pride no, or modesty. Ask them to do it for you. Always be safe. One of the best ways to never point a closed gun at anyone, and remember, if it's closed, it's loaded, it's either open or out, has to do with the way you use your feet. Before you pick the gun up, stop your feet. Pick it up, muzzles in a safe direction, safe carry position, then move your feet. Go to the next stand. When you get to the next stand, go to the gun rack, stop your feet. Close the gun in a very safe direction, place it in the gun rack, and that way, everybody's safe. Okay, okay. Okay, yes, hi. Remember when we were out in the field, I said that I would show you about shells and I'd show you about gauges and tell you all about them. At this point, um, over here we have shells. These are shotgun shells. They're all 12-gauge shells. And remember, I told you that in trap, 99% of the time, you'd be shooting a 12-gauge. It's the largest gauge allowed. Now, these are all 12-gauge shells, and they have different uh, components in them. That means like the, uh, the, the wad and the sh BBs, like in BB guns, and the, um, the gunpowder, so they go off a little harder and not so hard. This is a 12-gauge gun, but it has all these little tubey things that go down to various smaller gauges, which go higher in number and you can shoot skeet with them and uh, different gauges uh, at sporting plays. Now over here I have some shells. This is a 12 gauge shell. I don't know why it's here, but we've got 20 gauge and then we've got 28 gauge and 410 four and they all have these wads in them and they all have the BBs and I'm, um, you know, Gil, the, <laughs> this is a guy thing and I'm a girl and as a shooter I'm still confused about these things. Could, could you make it a little clearer for the beginner? What, that you're confused? <laughs> I think they got that already. Oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure I was clear on what I was supposed to yeah. clear up, okay? Could you wipe the egg off my face before you begin? Um, no, no, later. Okay. <laughs> All right, now, what is it that you wanted to tell them? What points do you want to make? And then let me, I'm not going to fall into that you hole. You how far off the game was I? Uh-huh. What I would like them to know is what should a beginner know about shells that they purchase to put inside their guns and what they should know about the gauges and what gauges and what guns they should start with. Let's talk a little bit about this gauge conversion. Would you get me that 410 shell, please? Anyone in particular? Uh, whichever one you pick up. Set them so nicely. <laughs> this is a Briley tube set. <clears throat> it's a gauge conversion, actually. What happens is this little tubey thing goes into the 12 gauge barrel and when it gets all the way in there, it turns the 12 gauge into a 410. You're kidding. No. So the 410 shell goes right into the 12 gauge right. skull, sort With, of not yes, the skull, yeah. but the uh -huh. shell. You can take this one gun and take each one of these little things and put one in the top and one in the bottom, the tubey things, and have 410 in the top and bottom, 28 gauge in the top and bottom, or 20 gauge in the top and bottom. But we're going to talk about That's all fabulous. of that in the skeet tape because this is really what people use to use them to shoot competitive skeet with. Fabulous. If you put fabulous. that back over there so we won't get okay. it mixed up. Let's see, where is its correct spot? Very good. Now, right. what else do we want to talk about? Shells. Shotgun shells. shells. What, what shotgun shells should a beginner take to the range? Okay. Or purchase at Let's the range. Let's do that. Fetch what? me the 20 gauges over there, will you, darling? Yellow. There you go. Yes. Okay, okay, now, the first number we'll look at is 12 gauge. Notice this has 20 gauge. Uh -huh. All shotgun shell boxes are marked with the gauge. On the top. That's, like that's how big the bullet is. Okay. okay. That's how big it is. 12 right. gauge bullets, 12 gauge like guns. Like the barrel is that size and then so you is the shell. You got it. Okay. okay. The next one is the length of the shotgun shell. 
some 12 gauge shotgun barrels and some 20 gauge shotgun barrels are chambered for three inch shells. Target guns, however, are chambered for a two and three quarter inch shell. Okay, so and all target loads will be two and, two three, and three quarter, quarter inches. inches. Right. You Fabulous. don't want to use a three inch shell in a two and three quarter inch chamber because it will go past the end of the chamber and could blow the gun up. So <laughs> this is an important number. So it's worse than just a bad fit. Um, yeah, it's yeah. a permanent fit. It's dangerous. You all ain't right, gonna like careful it. careful about that. <laughs> okay. So you want to make sure if your chamber length is two and three quarter inches, use a two and three quarter inch shotgun shell. The next one is the kick load, okay? okay? The lower the number, the lower the recoil. Okay, this is two and three quarter dram. You can get three dram, mm -hmm. three and a quarter dram, three and three but quarter that's dram. Later on, that's right? later that's, on. Those are heavy loads. This is dram equivalency. That's an important number for you to remember. Now, the next number is the amount of shot. In a 12 gauge, the BBs, you were talking yeah, about that a okay. minute ago, okay? You have one ounce of shot and this 12 gauge load. It's a light target load. That's what we would recommend any new shooter use if they were to shoot a 12 gauge. Great. Okay? One ounce of shot. Okay. This is the shot size. Just use eights when you're beginning on any clay target sport because they'll break all the targets regardless of where you are. And that's through all the gauges? Sure. Eights, the size of the BB. Um, well, not necessarily. Well, maybe um, a for sporting clays, you'd use eights. For skeets, you'd probably use nines. Oh, but okay. we'll talk about that on Fine. those tapes. Fine. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to keep it simple. KISS. Okay. We're just going to keep it simple, <laughs> stupid. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, eights, one ounce, two and three quarter dram for the 12 gauge. Now let's look at the 20. 20 gauge, two and three quarter dram, two and three quarter inches, two and a half dram, seven eighths ounce of shot. You will find many promotional loads, hunting loads, will have a 20 gauge cartridge with one ounce of shot. Wow. That's a 12 gauge load in a 20 gauge hull. That's, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of kick. Isn't lots it? of kick. It's it's a whole lot of kick. So you want to be careful if you're gonna buy when you buy ammo. For the first time at the range, you want to buy light target loads. Anything that you see that says target load, sporting clays load, light target loads, one ounce 12 gauge, seven eighths ounce 20 gauge. You got In other it? words, when there's a special at the neighborhood sporting goods store on ammo, you might want to run in there and save money, but read the tops of the boxes. You may be buying a hunting load and it will blow you to smithereens. You may <laughs> save money, but you ain't going to save your shoulder. One thing that I might recommend to you. Um, and to our new shooters out there, is if you have the opportunity, use a 12 gauge auto loader yeah. because the action absorbs some of the recoil. Yeah. Anything you can do to keep your shoulder from taking any punishment will enhance your shooting pleasure. A target gun is heavy and made to carry a little bit and shoot a lot. A field gun is light and made to carry a lot and shoot a little. The light gun yeah. is going to knock the snot out of you, okay? Whoa. Now, so when you get into shooting, if you can get a heavier gas gun, that means semi-auto, mm -hmm. then you're going to take less recoil, you're going to have more fun, you're going to come back and enjoy clay target shooting. You know, we always say it, and it's true, that recoil is the enemy, but I don't no want to discourage the new shooter because... Yeah. It's the enemy to the shooter who shoots hundreds of targets down the mm -hmm. line. To you, you may bruise or you may hurt a little bit at the very, very beginning, but it's not enough to make you keep from coming it's back. It's like wearing a new pair of boots. No, I'm you got to wear the boot to know where it pinches. And once you figure out where it pinches, you can eliminate the pinch and everything's okay. All right, let's stop talking about them boots. Let's walk in them. Yeah, let's go, darling. <laughs> Now let's talk about what happens after you finally got your perfect gun. And it isn't perfect after all. Well, some of the things you can do to reduce the recoil in the average shotgun is you can have the barrel ported, which they, they drill holes in the top segment of the barrel to keep the, the muzzle from jumping and it reduces the recoil. Mm -hmm. You can have the forcing cone lengthened, which is uh, just in front of the shotgun shell itself and that reduces recoil. You can have various types of rib heights uh, from this is a this considered is a, a medium, right? this is the rib, this is considered a medium rib and it's adjustable for, for point of impact. You can have a gunsmith adjust the, uh, the trigger pull itself to take the creep out of it so that it's very crisp and, and exactly the, the pressure you need to see so that you don't flinch. 
you can have various types of recoil reducers installed in the stock, which again reduces the recoil. And when it all comes down, <laughs> the bottom line is that if the gun doesn't fit you to begin with, it's all for nothing. This is Mayo Simonich. He's a stock maker and a stock fitter and absolutely the best at his trade. I wanted to ask you, why is stock fit so important to shotgun shooting? Well, it's very important to have the gun fit you properly. And the way to find out if it does fit you properly, mount the gun with your eyes closed, get set into the gun, open your eyes, and see a perfect sight picture. Working with the stock fitter is the only time you ever point a gun at anyone without bad intentions. So the most important thing for you to see is the target. You don't want to be looking at your rib no. and setting up your shot. That's right. Perfect advice. I should take it. <laughs> Leslie, the most important part of your shooting paraphernalia is your shooting glasses. <laughs> you may be saying that because you happen to be an optometrist and a very good one. I'd like for you to meet Doc Yockham of Doc Yock Shooting Glasses. <laughs> Uh, you're an expert. Why should we wear glasses, and why do we wear glasses when we shoot? <laughs> and your shooting glasses can do two things for you. They can protect you from flying objects, which may be hazardous to your eye health, and they will also enhance your shooting by giving you clear, crystal clear vision, and seeing the target is very important. You can't hit what you can't see, so your glasses can help you a lot in that area. What I'd like to show you here is a pair of very cool sunglasses on Shauna, but they're not appropriate for shooting. They're very cool, they cover her face, protect her face from the ultraviolet. However, when she puts her gun up, we have a problem. Go ahead, Shauna, put your gun up. She puts her gun up and, bink, the glasses go right up, and they're now in the wrong position, clunking against her gun. I'd like to now show you the proper fit with shooting glasses. We'll take these off, Shauna. What we have here is a pair of Ranger Randolph shooting glasses, especially made for the shooting sports. They sit high, the lenses are close together, give her a wide field of view. Go ahead and put your gun up, Shauna. And you'll see now that she does not clunk the glasses on her gun. She has an unobstructed view of her gun and the target. Now scientifically, Leslie, greens are the best colors. They give you the best contrast background to target. However, you'll see most shooters wearing something in the light yellows, the oranges, or even a pale gray. Uh, <laughs> well, I like my yeah. uh, sort of fuchsia color. <laughs> That's fine, too. Watch this trick. Now you see it, now you don't. So you can change colors whenever you want. Hold on, Shana, let me stuff that back in there. Why do we wear shooting apparel? Well, there's lots of reasons. One, recoil. It helps to uh, stop the gun from, from kicking. Um, for slippage, keeps the gun from sliding down when you're holding it, mm -hmm. and to look good. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't hit a target, at least you look good. That's right. <laughs> Patty, what, so you obviously you make vests, and her vests are gorgeous. Uh, the purpose for a vest is the recoil right here. Right. But also it looks like it's a convenient. Right, instead of wearing a pouch, you can have your shells readily available right here, and you don't have the pouch hanging off your side. Yeah. What a lot of people like like the pouch, but this is actually um, something that a lot of people do use uh -huh. instead. Well, you can take it off and put it on right. when you're shooting and when you're not shooting right. and waiting to shoot. But also, you make shirts, a la Gordon's shirt, with the pads as well. You know, is that yes, we do. Yes, and this is what the pads look like. We um, put the pads inside the shirts, right or left-handed. Made into the pad shirt? Is, right, and the pad is soft. And it doesn't, it doesn't bind or buckle, and it doesn't dry out and, and shred like a lot of them do. So it's been pretty popular. Would you suggest that somebody get a shirt with a pad or a vest before they ever try shooting a shotgun? I think it probably would help them, because once you, you shoot a shotgun and you get kicked so hard, you're afraid of them, and you don't want to shoot. Yeah. So in order to enjoy the sport, you need to cut down all the recoil you can, and I think it really helps. Gil, yes. what's the Im most important accessory in shooting? Money! <laughs> because you need money to buy all your other accessories. It's true. Your gun, your safety apparel, oh yeah, mm -hmm. a little hat to keep the sun mm -hmm. out. A shooting pouch if you don't have a vest. Now, mm -hmm. I like my pouches to be made by Chanel or somebody. Does Mr. Like... Chanel shoot trap? Well, if he doesn't, he should. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, we hope that you know enough about the three basic uh, shotgun sports in order to come out to the range and try it for the first time. But we both highly recommend 
that you get yourself an instructor right off the bat. Um, hey, you know, there's some variety to these shotgun sports, too. I heard about a new game called Fit Task. Yeah, I did that. Uh, you know, I did that yesterday, and it was a gas. Come on over and look at it. Okay, Fit Task. Full. Ah, full. Ah, oh, I got him on the second one. Pull. There it is. Ah, pull. Got that one. Woo, baby. Ah, got that one too, man. That's great. You know, one of the great things about Fitask, that's the game that came to us from France. It's kind of like souped up sporting clays. But the great thing about Fitask is you shoot it on a parkour. It just looks like a big sporting clays field to me. And there are traps sprinkled all around this thing. And you know, you never get the same trajectory of birds twice. You shoot singles with two shots, you shoot pairs, and, and they never come from the same place. You know, when we shoot sporting clays, we usually get two, three, four, or five pairs from the same trap or the same two traps in a similar trajectory. It ain't like that in fee task, and I'm telling you, this is a fun, fun game. Souped up sporting clays, man, I love it. Bull. Ah, I got him. Open and empty. Remember, fit task, a great way to shoot a shotgun. Just another great shotgun shooting sport that you can enjoy. And there's something called five stand, which is like sporting clays, a whole course just shot on one skeet field. And boy, do you need adrenaline. I saw him shooting it yesterday. Yeah. Well, there's Olympic trap and Olympic mm -hmm. speed. Now you hold the gun down low, low mount, and the targets are real fast. Mm -hmm. And then there's the fun shoots. Oh, there's bunker too. Yeah. Fun shoots like Annie Oakley's big chip and uh, the buddy shoes, those yeah. are great. Hey, yeah. this could be a whole separate video. I could do that. Wow! Hey. Oh, well, we hope you know enough now to get started. And please do get started shooting, because that's what I'm going to do right now. Come join us. Gail! Yeah. Is this my baby? Yes, it is, and I, I got your bullets. You got them? Mm -hmm. Shooting organizations and associations aren't just there for competition. They give shooters a voice in education, in government, and in community. Joining one of them can help all of us.